So I'm going to go over a few things that you need to know if you have not been to Disney in 2020. The only reason why I'm saying this is there have been a bunch of changes because of COVID. There's also changes going on right now because of 2021. So it might be a little bit different. Um, I'm trying to stay up to speed as much as I can, but here we go. So first things first, you're gonna have to wear a mask. You're not gonna get through those gates if you're not wearing a mask. It's kind of a given in the world we live in today, but different states have different rules. Some places you don't have to wear masks, some places you do, but definitely if you're on Disney World property, you have to have it on. So buy a mask. Their restrictions aren't like Walmart. So like you're not gonna go in there wearing a neck gaiter, a bandana, anything like that. One of those things where it's like a mask up here and then it just kind of, it's like frilly down here. No, you have to have a mask that, and I quote, hold on, I have it, hold on. I'm gonna read this really quick. Be made with at least two layers of breathable material, fully cover the nose, mouth, and secure under the chin, fit snugly but comfortably against the side of the face and be secure with ties, ear loops, I'm sorry, ties or ear loops and allow the guests to remain hands free. Uh, next one. Okay, park reservations. So if you haven't been to Disney in 2020, you're not gonna know about park reservations. So in 2019, we were used to just buying our tickets, getting up to the gate, scanning our magic band, all the fun stuff, getting in the park, yay. Not necessarily. So now, of course, they have temperature screening, so they're gonna have to check your temp. If your temp is 100.4 or higher, they're going to redirect you to another area for assistance and like re-screening. But if it's 100.4 or higher, you're not getting in. And your whole party is not getting in. So that's a big factor. If you're having any symptoms of COVID, please stay home. Don't infect the entire park. We all don't want COVID, okay? But back to what I was saying, with the park reservations, after you buy your park ticket on My Disney Experience or Disney.com, it will redirect you to a screen where you can go ahead and make your park reservation. It will also give you a calendar um, so you can pick which day you wanna to go to the park. Also, it will give you a meter or like a crowd meter to tell you how full the park is gonna be that day. This one's also kind of a given. You have to stay six feet apart. So there are markers all over the park. They're gonna make sure that you keep social distancing between other parties, especially with the lines. Be aware that even the lines may look long, it's because everybody in the queue is standing six feet apart. So we went on a test track for the first ride of the day over at Epcot. And the line looked like it was crazy, crazy long, but I think it took like 30 minutes, but you'll see those six feet distance markers all around the park. Now, with the ride lines, it can be short, it can be long. Pandora, I think it's always gonna be long. It was a horribly long line, probably as long as Test Track, but it did not go as fast as Test Track. So I think Test Track, we waited for about 30 minutes, and then Pandora, we, we waited about an hour or so. Number four, you can't eat and walk. You have to be stationary whenever you're eating. So that kind of depends on the person or in the area of the park you're around. So we went for the food and wine festival. So there were tables so we could stand, eat our meal off to the side and then just keep walking. But some places in the park, you have to actually sit at a table and be stationary for them to let you, you know, eat. Okay, there's no fireworks. This is kind of a bummer, especially if you have young kids and you've never been to Disney World before. Me, myself, I have never seen like the full fireworks show when I was there. Whenever we went in March 2019, we kind of seen it from the Polynesian, which was really, really cute, especially because they piped in the music. It was also kind of a bummer for us because at the time we were eating at California Grill, usually when the fireworks are supposed to go off. So if you've never eaten at California Grill, they have these really big bay windows. You can see the entirety of the Magic Kingdom. So especially the music is piped in and there's also a special fireworks location viewing area if you've eaten at California Girl that day, but for our instance, we couldn't watch the fireworks because they weren't going on. This is also a big one if you have little ones, there's no parades going on. So if your little ones kind of want to see the characters and stand in line, they don't do that either, especially because of social distancing. So what they do is they have cavalcades where all the characters are in vehicles or like Pluto was walking around saying hey to everybody, which was a great idea, especially so you can go ahead and see the characters while you're there without everybody being right by your side. There are no fast passes either. So this is kind of a bummer, especially if you wanted to get on that ride that you know was always going to have a super long line. For our instance, whenever we got on Flight of Passage and Pandora, it was a very long line. It was totally worth it. And we probably would have waited in line for it again if we didn't have a 
dining reservation that night, but it was the bomb.com, definitely ride it. But if you're trying to get on one of these big rides that usually plan out your day by going ahead and using your fast passes, just kind of be aware that they don't have those anymore. At the moment, I don't think they have park hoppers. I heard that they were doing it in January, but I don't think that you can get into another park until after 2 p.m. So that's something to check on. Don't quote me on that. Whenever we went, there was no park hoppers at all. It wasn't a big deal for us because we never used the park hoppers, but if that's something that's kind of like make or break your vacation, then beware. There's hardly any shows. So we went to Animal Kingdom for the first time and we were really excited to see like Lion King and Nemo, all the really cute shows, but they weren't offering those because they can't have all these people in a stadium and social distance. So that was kind of a bummer. There were still some shows going on. We also watched the bird show in the Animal Kingdom. So if that's something that you're interested in, just go ahead and make sure that you're in line early. Make sure you're at the front of the line so you can get into the show. And the last one, this one's kind of a given as well, but Disney is still expensive. Just because a pandemic is going on, it does not mean that Disney's gonna miss out on any of their money. I love Disney to death, but they are expensive. They've been expensive and they will always be expensive. It's a very expensive vacation. Just because COVID has put some stops to things does not mean the tickets are gonna be any cheaper. Everything is still the same price. I'm gonna go ahead and get off here. If you have any questions or any comments, if you have any advice that you could help me with, I will totally take it because I love Disney World. My parents love Disney World. We go all the time. We've been every year since 2016. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.